The Raspberry Pi Pico is a really excellent dev board. With its powerful RP2040 microcontroller, 2 megabytes of memory, and an assortment of GPIO pins, it allows for a wide range of making capabilities. And with its $4 price tag, it's not a huge deal if you break, slash, lose, slash, just need another one. Perhaps I'm spoiled, but I'd love if it featured built-in touch capabilities. You can use GPIO pins as capacitive touch inputs, but this requires added one mega ohm or, or so resistors to each pin that you use. While it's a cheap upgrade, it takes time, volume, and possible frustration. My solution, a custom capacitive helper board called the Pico Touch 2. While I decided to call it that in reference to my popular Easy Fan 2 board, what I'm offering is indeed the second iteration of this design. The inspiration for this board came from a project on my JCO audio channel, which you can check out in the links. Here I wanted to make a MIDI kalimba or finger piano using capacitive touch sensing. The first iteration used through-hole style resistors and was quite cumbersome, so I came up with a PCB to take care of things for me. This was implemented in my larger Cat Columba using a board with 16 1 mega ohm SMD resistors for capacitive sensing. It had a cutaway slash rat bite design that meant it could be separated as needed and was made on a 0.8 millimeter PCB. This worked as a design, but I found that I really didn't like soldering on all those resistors and that the rat bite setup wasn't really necessary. Still, it was an interesting PCB that deserved another revision. For the second iteration of this design, I upped the resistor capacitive I.O. number to 23. So I've got all 16 on the left side of the board with one mega ohm resistors, and then I have another seven on the right side of the board. So a total of 23 capacitive sensing I.O. I also doubled up some of the outputs here. So pins one through 10 have a uh, duplicate on that. And then the, the run pin is just by itself. Looking at the actual PCB layout, I made the right side just a tiny bit wider. This allowed me to fit in the seven one mega ohm resistors and also allowed for room for the duplicate pens. This also let me put the, some labels in there, which could be certainly useful in, in many situations. Looks pretty good. You don't, however, have a rat bite section, so this can't be split into two, at least not easily, but I found that would probably be of, of limited use. So I ordered Rev1 with the resistors assembled from this video sponsor, PCBWay. I put in my order with PCBWay, and in just over two weeks, I had a set of assembled PCBs on my workbench ready for testing. I was super impressed with the delivery time and the PCBs look great, this time in green. Given the small components used and the 0.8 millimeter PCB, the profile is very thin. It's almost hard to see that anything is assembled on top. You can assemble the Pico to this board with headers or solder onto it directly. Capacitive sensing opens up a wide range of possibilities, but if you need inspiration, I made a couple of projects at the end to illustrate what can be done with them. I have these boards listed for sale on Tiddy now, and I put a link in the description where you can buy them. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and take this Raspberry Pi Pico, use these female headers, so that way I can remove it if I need to. I don't have the right size headers on me right now, so I'm just gonna use what I have and clip off what I don't need. So it would have been better if I had the right size, but this should work. And I'll use these, uh, you know, kind of uh, knockoff pliers, knockoff clippers for this because I don't want to use my good Nipex, certainly. Functional, and you know, if this, if I blow this out for some reason, or if it somehow I put a bad one on there, then it's fine. I can just pop it off, and that's very convenient. Now, as far as the sides go, I think I'll go ahead and put some male headers on that. Although you could use female there as well. So there we go, after a bit of through-hole soldering work, I've got a nice receptacle for my Raspberry Pi Pico, so I should be able to stick it in here, and then basically all these all these pins, or most of the GPIO pins, 
I can use as a capacitive touch without an extra resistor because it's already built in. Alternatively, you, you can just solder the Raspberry Pi Pico straight to the board. You could take it off in theory on a hot plate or something, but that would be kind of not, not that easy. And well, if you look at this, I've actually soldered it backwards. Kind of illustrates my point. It's good to have the headers, but I've got a solution for that. So to show off my Pico Touch 2 board, what I'm going to do is make basically a macro pad out of these uh, unused JC Pro Macro 1 macro, macro pads. So it's going to be a macro pad PCBs. So it's going to be a macro pad, macro pad, if that makes any sense. Basically what I'll do is I'll put one of the GPIO pins to what would normally be, normally be plus 5 volts, which covers most of the surface here with a copper layer. So basically it's going to use this as a conductor, you hit it and it'll do different different things. So should be uh, should work out okay. So I'll just have to put a connector on here and here. I'll hot glue it down and it, it'll be, um, you know, pr pretty rigged up, but that should, should, you know, for the effort, should work all right. If I were designing this board today, I might not put five volts all on the surface like I did this one, but you know, live and learn if you didn't improve. If your things don't look bad in hindsight in a couple years, then you're probably not learning. And there it is, the world's first macro pad made out of macro pads. At least, at least I think that's the case. All right, so if you're wondering how to program this, basically you need to go to, into Mu, which is kind of the default circuit Python editor. You install the Adafruit HID, Adafruit Debouncer, and Adafruit Ticks libraries. Also, if you want to see how keys can be mapped to different inputs, you can go to this list of key codes, which is right here. We'll uh, take you there. So, so yeah, if you want to do A, it's A, E, so minus period. Got it, got all, all this stuff here. You can kind of search through and see what what you can you can map out. Right now, I've got it mapped for tab left, which is a key code control, shift, and then tab and then space bar, which is the middle one, and then a tab right, which is keep code control and key code tab. You can also do stuff like um, write a line of text or something like that, but yeah, I thought this was a nice illustration here. So got GP0, GP1, and GP2, which I believe that's how they're mapped. It does a space and it's spacing out there. If you're browsing tabs and you wanna to go to the right, you go there, go to the left, you go there. And then if you wanna say play the dinosaur game, Go to there and you can go, yeah, see. Oh, and if you need to check out a tab, you can just press right and go back with this. It pauses it and then goes right back to it. So you gotta be kind of fast. Yeah, still died there. All right, let's check that out. Okay, looks good, just in theory, so. A little faster now, it seems like. Oh, well, yeah, I'm not that great at the game. But you can see there, you can you tab through stuff with this, which is pretty pretty cool. And you can see the kind of the feedback there, what it's, what it's doing. Um, and I'll just note that this does not have to be up. So I can close this out, unsaved. And then you can still, you can still use this. So the Mu, Mu editor doesn't have to be on to use the macro pad HID type functionality. It is a nice illustration of how you can use the Pico Touch 2 board, but I had another idea as well.
kalimba project, somebody mentioned that I could just use spoons rather than using a kalimba. So I thought, you know, why not just actually see if I could use spoons as an interface here. I've got the exact same code and loaded onto another circuit python, another circuit python installation. Like I was saying, I gotta have the library, so all you have to do is copy it on from the Adafruit library package or bundle it, they call it. So with these three libraries on this, it should be able to work. Getting the data out of here. So in theory, I should be able to play the dinosaur game with the spoon. There we go, got that. Oh, or I can do that. Yeah, pretty, pretty neat. So I've got three notes, three spoons, and I should be able to play it on GarageBand. So this is a cajon, like a box drum. Anyway, hope you found that interesting. It's been a good project. So the uh, Pico Touch 2 and makes it easy to make a uh, capacitive touch with Raspberry Pi Pico, at least easier. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, feel free to like and or subscribe. For more specifically musical and audio experimentation, do check out my JCO audio channel. This is Jeremy Cook signing off. So there is, there's no spoon? <laughs>